Guys, in the last video, we started off with ketoconazole, KTZ. It is a prototype azole. It can be used topically and orally. So you can use it in dermatophysosis, deep mycosis, etc. It is broad spectrum. It's very toxic. So all this much we have already covered for you, correct? Then we saw that it has dose-dependent elimination. It's an enzyme inhibitor. So it will inhibit enzymes which will metabolize other drugs. So the concentration of the other drugs will become so high. So you should know the drug interactions of ketoconazole. We'll come to all that now. Now let us look at the uses of ketoconazole. See, first of all, before we go to this, I just wanted to cover this part of it. What the fungal infections are, okay? So the stenia is actually caused by fungus. It co it's called ringworm, but actually there's no worm there which is causing it. All these are fungal infections, guys. Systemic um, systemic infections like candidiasis, coccidioidomycosis, blastomycosis. These two are important because they are using ketocon uh, ketoconazole, right? Fine, guys. So, just wanted to tell you what the fungal infections are. They can be either superficial or they can be deep. In superficial, you have dermatophytes. Candida can cause uh, superficial or deep. It's very, very powerful. It can cause both types of things. Deep, you have Aspergillus, Blastomyces, Cryptococcus, Cossidioides, Cossidioides. Candida, Histoplasma, Mucor, Mycosis, etc. So, basically coming back to Ketoconazole now. So, let us look at these uh, superficial ones. In superficial ones, dermatophytosis you can give them as a lotion or a shampoo, you can use it to treat the scalp. Coming to systemic, actually it has been replaced. Ketoconazole is not used for systemic as first line. First line is actually triazoles, okay? Triazoles are first line of drugs. Remember that. They have replaced ketoconazole. Are you able to see or is it very dull for you, the color? So basically, we looked at superficial stuff, dermatophytosis. Then we have uh, as lotion, shampoo for treating the scalp, for dandruff. Then coming to systemic triazoles have replaced ketoconazoles because they have fewer side effects. Coming to monileal vaginitis. In monileal vaginitis, ketoconazole is used as a reserve drug. So, if there is a recurrent case of vaginitis or if they are not responding to topical agents, then you can use ketoconazole. It is a reserved, it is reserved for this monileal vaginitis. Okay. And then Cushing syndrome. Why would you use it in Cushing syndrome, guys? Interestingly, this ketoconazole has an adverse effect where it reduces the secretions of uh, uh, adrenal gland. So, corticosteroids will get less. So, ketoconazole instead of antifungal, it is trying to reduce the level of, gluco uh, of corticosteroids. So, for Cushing syndrome, we, we can use ketoconazole, they are saying. Okay, guys. So, what are the things you will use ketoconazole for? Dermatophysis, phytosis. Systemic mycosis not actually used. It is a second line of drug only for few of them. That is coccidioidosis and blastomyosis. Correct? Coccidioidomycosis and blastomycosis. A second line. Second choice for systemic mycosis for these two. So, for candidiasis, etc., you can give ketoconazole. Uses are done, guys. Shall we move on now? Uses are done. Now, we will move on to adverse drug reactions. They are very toxic. This you know. They are the most toxic azoles, but they are less toxic than amphotericin B. They are not used much orally because of all this. They are used more topically. And triazoles have replaced these uh, drugs as first line. 
hormonal effects so these ketoconazoles they reduce adrenal gluco uh, or adrenal corticosteroids testosterone estrogen everything will become less so in men what will happen if testosterone becomes less gynecomastia loss of hair libido oligospermia oligospermia so in men all this will happen ketoconazole in women will do what in women it will have it will create menstrual irregularities other than this what side effects you can write nausea vomiting hypersensitivity standard you will write for everything is this clear guys mainly you should know it is toxic and secondly hormonal effects are there moving on guys now wake up if you are still not wake woken up let, let us wake you up we are studying ketoconazole we saw the uses of ketoconazoles for dermatophytosis then we saw for systemic it has been replaced with triazole then we saw in vaginitis it can be used if it is a recurrent case or if um, it is not responding to the first line of drugs what were the first line of drugs it is not responding to topical agents so you can use orally oral ktz reserved for this okay oral ktz reserved for recurrent cases and those not responding to topical agents cushing syndrome also we can use next adverse drug reactions already covered next video let us continue with drug interactions okay because i think you are already overloaded come back for ketoconazole drug interactions in next video See you. Bye-bye-bye.